You did say we need to have our fingers in more pies. I've got that covered. I spent the whole day baking my ass off. Okay, fine. They're empanadas. That's not a pie. It's in the pie family. <laughs> I've never talked about it on this channel, but I've always enjoyed the Saints Row games. They were never as popular or fancy as a Grand Theft Auto, but the series established itself with some solid open-world crime titles complete with fun characters and plenty of humor, and because of that, Saints Row was able to stand on its own and gain a decent audience. Fans will debate which entry is the best, some lean toward the second, others like myself lean toward the third, and you could argue the franchise got too ridiculous for its own good. But at the very least, I could say with confidence that Saints Row was a franchise that didn't have any truly bad games in it. But I can't anymore. The Saints Row reboot that pre-release marketing made everyone concerned about is now available. I've put 20 hours of my time into it, and unfortunately, it's exactly what most of us expected it to be. A dull, soulless bastardization of a once-adored IP that seems to go out of its way to mess up everything that made its namesake great. Its story and characters are impressively forgettable. The gameplay and open-world elements don't match the quality of the first installment, which came out in 2006. And as is the trend with modern gaming, it has tons of technical problems and a never-ending parade of bugs. In its absolute best moments, and there aren't many of them, this experience never achieves anything better than... meh. Forget the cop killing and drug dealing, the biggest crime this game commits is daring to call itself Saints Row, and if this franchise wasn't dead before, you can be sure it is now. I urge you to not buy it. I suffered so you don't have to. And as a fan of this series since the start, I'd like to explain in how many different ways this game fails, both as a Saints Row title and as a game in general. From the very first announcement trailer for this reboot, things felt off. There didn't seem to be any punch, any life. Nothing here felt like Saints Row. You could call this anything and the end product maintains that feeling. This game attempts to be a fresh slate, acting as an origin story for the Saints as a gang, and an introduction to a group of characters you're supposed to like and care for, but the writing completely fumbles both. None of your group is well fleshed out. They have one-note surface-level personalities that boil down to various degrees of quirky, without any charisma to back it up. Nina is a mechanic that wants to be an artist, Kev likes to cook and thinks not wearing a shirt is a personality trait, and Eli is a business-minded nerd who likes LARPing, cause yes, we're still making jokes about LARPing. They feel like more shallow versions of the cast from Watch Dogs 2, and they weren't exactly compelling characters either. When we enter the story, your created character already knows these guys. He or she has an established history with them, and the writers assume you're going to like them at face value just because your avatar does. It doesn't put in the work to make us like them. They're all too bland and hollow to care about on any level. One huge misstep is that the game tries to make this a group of relatable Gen Z everymen, people trying their best, beaten down by society, who decide to make their own way in the world with a positive attitude and a smile. But this tone does not work at all when they're indiscriminately murdering thousands of people along the way. Their nice guy, light-hearted routine is undermined at every possible turn, but the game never acknowledges it because you're supposed to be rooting for these guys and just ignoring all the collateral damage they cause. An early scene exemplifies this perfectly. You go home to your shared apartment where the group is having brunch. They share a quiche and talk about what great friends they are and how they have to pay student loans and cover the rent, and then your character suggests holding up a loan shop, and doesn't it seem like things took a sharp turn right there? It's so casually done, in fact, that I thought my guy was making an offhanded joke, but no, the group do in fact finish their meal, rob the place, and kill any police that come after them. Nothing about how these characters behave jives with the gang angle or the gameplay that follows it. The ludonarrative dissonance is as far off the charts as it can possibly be. 
Now, if you're familiar with the older Saints Row games, you might find this a strange thing to point out. The Saints, especially the boss, were all mass murderers in those old titles. In fact, your group did some absolutely despicable things to selfishly further their own power and financial gain. But the difference back then is that everyone was a sociopath, and they knew it. They owned their violent gangster lifestyle. There was no illusion of being a hero, and that's why it worked. Sure, they had their loyalties, the Saints looked out for their own, but if you weren't with them, you didn't matter. You were totally expendable. There's a great scene from Saints Row 2 I always point to to showcase this. The boss walks into a bar to have a drink. He's greeted by a cute bartender who seems flirty with him, when suddenly a SWAT team bursts in. And with no hesitation, the boss grabs that bartender, slams her face on the counter, and throws her into the line of fire as a meat shield. It's cold, it's messed up, and it's entirely in character. Now, as the series went on and took a more wacky comedy approach, the collateral damage was treated with more of a oops, didn't mean to do that attitude, but that was consistent with the direction change. But this new Saints Row has no idea what it wants to be, and the result is a mess of hypocrisy and tonal swings. The crew from the previous Saints Row games would relentlessly bully this new one before throwing them off a roof without a second thought. If you thought maybe the creation of the Saints and their rise to power would be interesting, think again. The plot sort of meanders along without much connective tissue. Things just kind of happen because they do. Your character comes up with the idea to start a gang and even the name of it on a whim, and it never feels like there's any struggle for power. Apparently starting a criminal empire is remarkably easy to do. The rival gangs you have to deal with are just as forgettable as the main cast, also being boiled down to one-note qualities. One group is really into cars, I guess, the other likes to cosplay as Daft Punk, and the third is a generic militaristic corporation that acts as the police force. There is no creativity to these factions. In fact, Marshall, the corporation, is really the only one that matters in the story. They're the main focus of your attention. The two actual gangs are sort of just there, existing to give you someone else to shoot at. In the past, each gang stood out from one another and were fleshed out enough to make taking them down satisfying. You'd get frequent cutscenes after missions that showed their respective leaders reacting to your antics and getting more and more unhinged or wrathful. But in this, you just kind of go through the motions and steamroll the competition. There is no investment of any kind in taking down these organizations. Does the writing manage to be funny, at least? Saints Row has never been afraid to poke fun. In the first two games, most of the humor was crass or lewd, not to everyone's taste, but its commitment to that style made it work, and it fit the whole gang life motif. Having played those earlier games really recently, it was actually refreshing to play something that didn't give a fuck about offending people, mocking anyone and everyone for anything and everything. Saints Row the Third and Onward went a lot more over-the-top and silly with its comedy, basically acknowledging itself as a video game, but once again, the total commitment to that new direction made it work wonderfully. As for the 20 hours I spent with this reboot, I didn't let out so much as a chuckle. Except when the game was being a buggy shit show, but we'll save that for later. At the time this new Saints Row was announced, quotes from developers went around saying that the older games were of a time, and that they wanted to go for a different kind of writing. Most of us interpreted that as meaning this reboot would go out of its way to be as inoffensive and safe as possible, and that's exactly what we got here. To boil it down into the simplest terms, this game feels like it was written either by or for Twitter. It's entirely devoid of any bite or wit or soul, with the dialogue defaulting to the lamest, most basic banter. All it has to offer are played-out jabs at universal targets like capitalism, pointing out that Kev doesn't have a shirt on for the dozenth time, or lazily relying on cursing as a substitute for actual jokes. God damn it, fucking shitballs on a side order, a mother-loving shit-smothered, piss-covered ass-crack! 
I know this series is no stranger to cussing, but whenever this group does it, it sounds so forced. Like teenagers that just discovered how naughty swearing is. Actually, if you removed all the swearing, this game could easily be knocked down to a T for teen rating. That's how neutered it is. Everything is so bizarrely cheery and upbeat, never daring to step on anyone's toes. Any form of mean-spirited or crude humor is pretty much gone, sexual references are basically absent, hell, even minor name gags like freckle bitches and rim jobs have been changed for whatever reason. Gun down, blow up, murder all the people you like, but don't have the word bitch on a fast food sign, that's plain rude. I'll admit that there were maybe three times where I smirked at something happening on screen, but that was as far as I ever got, and it was more an acknowledgement that what I was witnessing could be funny if it was done much better. As it is, though, it's all very bland, boring, and completely forgettable. While we're on the topic of forgettable, gameplay! I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that this series ever had the deepest systems in the world. You drove around, you shot people, that was more or less it outside of special activities, but both of these elements did their job, they worked. But somehow, in a way that's almost awe-inspiring, Saints Row 2022 manages to have the weakest gameplay in the series. On the more standard side of the spectrum, driving around the open world works fine. It'd be really hard to massively screw that up, though I still have some issues. There isn't any handbrake control to help you more easily take sharp turns. Instead, there's a dedicated drifting button. You can instantly make your car do an exaggerated slide with the slightest of angles and speed. This can work alright if you're on a big enough road with decent breathing room, but the shift from normal traction to having your car wildly swing out its back end is always pretty jarring. There's also a built-in ramming button that lets you slam into vehicles from the side, but it looks and feels weak and often just throws you off course too. Where Saints Row really fails is in its combat, the main way you'll be interacting with the denizens of the fictional Santo Eleso. Observing the shooting probably doesn't make it look all that bad, and in truth, it's not the worst I've played. It's more generic, quickly becoming boring, with some pretty fundamental flaws. Most of the weapons lack impact thanks to poor sound design. It often feels like you're repeatedly slapping your enemies instead of filling them with lead. Set enemies are a tad spongy, feeling like they take that extra second too long to kill. The option to take human shields, which these games have had from day one, is gone now. Instead of having it regenerate like it used to, health is now regained by doing finishers like Doom's glory kills, but while these takedowns are animated well enough, you know, except when they break in some way, there's only like seven or eight of them, so they get old really fast. You have four ability slots that you can use to gain an edge in combat, but not only is the game easy enough to ignore most of these, the very first ability the game gives you is way overpowered. Pineapple Express has you stuffing a grenade in an enemy's pants and hurling them at their friends. It almost always kills whoever you use it on and takes out groups of guys instantly. It's infinitely useful, there's no reason to use anything else, so you just spam this move whenever you're able. But while I could take or leave these core systems, the biggest issue by far that detracts from the shooting in Saints Row are the controls themselves. I played this on PS5 and quickly discovered that the act of simply aiming your weapon is busted. Moving the analog stick is inconsistent. The sensitivity randomly ramps up or down on a whim with every input. I don't know if it's an acceleration issue or some coding values going out of whack, but this is a baked-in flaw with the camera system as a whole. It actually happens all the time. It's noticeable when simply looking around. It just sticks out way more when you're trying to precisely move your crosshair over a target and find yourself under or overshooting them at random. It's not something you can compensate for and get used to, so the most reliable way to play through shootouts is to spam the lock-on which snaps you to enemies. The main thing you do in this game feels wrong from start to credits, and I can't fathom how such a glaring problem was allowed to ship. 
The side activities that have always been a staple of Saints Row, giving you distractions to do outside the main story, make their return here, but like so many other things, they show a shocking lack of creativity and rank as the series' worst. How this content is structured is a strike right off the bat. In the older games, each activity would have multiple levels escalating in difficulty, and whenever you finished one, you were able to jump right into the next. But now, these stages are spread around the map, forcing you to travel from one to the next, and since you can go to any stage in any order, you can expect to repeat that same baseline experience over and over and over, which of course makes each task mundane. Full disclosure, I didn't finish or even unlock all of the activities the game had, because at a certain point I was so bored I couldn't be bothered. But I'll briefly go over the ones that I did do. Riding Shotgun has you protecting an on-rails getaway car from swarms of pursuers, letting you either sit in the passenger seat or lay on the vehicle's roof while you do so. This game is actually really proud of this mechanic. There are so many of these on-rail sections, the devs must have thought this was just the coolest visual ever. Anyway, this activity is kind of annoying because so much crap is thrown at you at once, and while you have infinite ammo, you'll automatically stop shooting whenever your character has to adjust their arm's position, and it's really easy to get overwhelmed. Not fun. Choplifting has you flying a helicopter, stealing some piece of heavy cargo with a magnet, and flying it to a drop-off point. The stuff you're carrying makes the chopper harder to control, but that's about it. You go from point A to point B. Boring. In Atcha, you leave a bad review of a beloved business and fight off an enemy wave. That's it, you fight off one wave. Wingsuit Saboteur will have you landing on rooftops to shoot a handful of guys and blow up satellites. It's the same combat as always, you just use a wingsuit to get to it. Pony Express is essentially a time trial where you try to reach an end goal as cops aggressively swarm you. It's nothing special. Insurance Fraud, a well-known series staple where you fling yourself into traffic for cash, aiming for combo multipliers. Definitely the best activity in the game, mainly because it actually feels different from everything else, but it controls more stiffly than past games, and is also stupidly easy because your body makes cars explode now. Mayhem wants you blowing up stuff as quickly as possible until you hit a property damage goal, but these either start you in a preset area stuffed with destructibles, or give you an overpowered vehicle that removes most of the player's agency. It quickly becomes mindless. Toxic Waste requires you to slowly and carefully drive a truck stuffed with radioactive barrels to a dumping site, and if that doesn't sound very interesting, it isn't. In Food Truck Kingpin, you kill some guys protecting a food truck, drive said truck to the same location every time, then fight off a wave that spawns afterward. Shoot, drive, shoot, over and over, rinse and repeat. The last one I played is called Cleanup Crew, and this might be the worst side mission I've ever seen. You get a call about some kind of incident. You drive to a spot and are given a car with a body in the trunk, and you're then told to dispose of the tainted vehicle at a set location. You're warned that the cops are everywhere and need to be avoided, indicated by large red circles on the minimap, usually placed along the most optimal route. They trigger one cop car to chase you, who drop their pursuit within five seconds, and even if you intentionally drive through every circle you can on your way to the objective, they automatically give up once you're close to your goal. There is no risk whatsoever, meaning this entire activity is driving to a spot to drive to another spot. That's it. This is a kind of mission that feels like it was designed by an AI, because there's no way a human programmed this and thought it was good. Oh, and this isn't technically part of any official activity, but I thought it was worth pointing out. In this game called Saints Row, you cannot rob any stores. That thing that your crew does near the start of the story? Yeah, you can't do that yourself. Not only does trying to hold up a cashier not do anything, but the vendors themselves are invulnerable. They'll stand there and tank whatever you throw at them. I don't think I've ever been more disinterested while engaging with an open world setting. I'd spend some time going over the technical aspects of Saints Row, but you've been looking at footage this whole time. You've already seen this game isn't exactly a visual achievement. 
Honestly, the series was never without its graphical flaws, but when you're on your sixth game after 16 years, this level of presentation doesn't cut it anymore. In fairness, the sunsets do look nice, I'll give it that, but otherwise Saints Row ranges from unremarkable looking to ugly at any given time. So instead of harping on those details, let's talk about bugs, because wow I haven't played a AAA title this unpolished in a while. Hell, I'd even say unfinished. Since I was playing on PS5, let's start with something console specific. We all know the DualSense controller has those fancy adaptive triggers, and you might be wondering how Saints Row utilizes them. Unfortunately, I can't tell you. The feature is off by default in the options, and if you try to turn it on, you'll find that your Y-axis movement becomes inverted, meaning that forward is now backwards, and backwards is now forwards. Somehow, these two options are linked. You cannot turn on one without turning on the other. How the hell does that even happen? The first time I tried insurance fraud, all the traffic kept vanishing. It would be there one second, and then poof, to the Shadow Realm it went. And you kinda need traffic to play insurance fraud. Game, you gotta spawn some cars. Game, you gotta, you gotta spawn some cars. Please don't despawn everything. Please don't despawn everything. Ah! Oh, cars! Cars! Actual fucking cars! Wait. No. They were real. I saw them. Please. Please, cars. Look, cars! They exist! They're real! They're real! They're real! They're real! They're fading! So okay, thank god. Guys, cars. They're real. They exist. If I can't fake injuries in the game, I can do it in real life. I restarted the activity multiple times, I aborted it entirely, fast-traveled, slept to advanced time, I eventually had to exit to the main menu to get it working properly. Often, whenever I hijacked a car, I'd end up firing my gun when I went to accelerate, because the game was still registering the trigger as the fire button, and many times when I got out of whatever vehicle I was in, I'd suddenly take damage out of nowhere. I think the door opening was hurting me, but I'm not actually sure what it was. Various animations for both my character and NPCs glitched out on a semi-regular basis. NPCs will spawn inside of each other before being torn between realities. One of my guns ended up getting stuck on an infinite reloading loop. A van that I was tasked with blowing up as an objective turned out to be completely indestructible. Subtitles cycle way too fast and are poorly chopped up, often leaving a single word awkwardly hanging on screen for like 10 seconds. Multiple times, an ability called Quick Draw that's supposed to let you high noon enemies with a revolver activated without giving me any bullets for it, making me defenseless. I once discovered in the middle of combat that all of my abilities had been unequipped at some point, and funnily enough, at that same moment, I noticed a civilian frozen in time. And perhaps best of all, are two huge bugs that occurred during the final boss. To be fair to those of you that don't want spoilers, I'll put up a timestamp so you can skip ahead if you want, even though the story in this game sucks and you really shouldn't care, but here you go, proceed at your own risk. During the earliest phase of this fight, the boss got locked in place, wouldn't move or fight back, he was just stuck, unable to be harmed. Apparently he's supposed to run away and start a chase here, but instead he just sat on the ground. I eventually had to restart a checkpoint in order to move things along. But then, during the very last showdown that you have with this gentleman, something happened that I never could have predicted. That's not everything I ran into, but that list alone should be more than enough to highlight how unfit for sale this game is. And I know what somebody out there is going to say in response to all this. Oh, they'll patch it. A few months from now, these issues will be fixed. Don't make such a big deal out of them. You just have to be patient. It is unacceptable for any product to launch like this, and the they'll fix it later mentality is exactly why this industry thinks it can keep getting away with it. Stop hand-waving this crap away. 
Even if they managed to eliminate all the bugs, technical problems, even if they fixed the garbage aiming sensitivity, Saints Row wouldn't be good. It still wouldn't be worth your time, because no matter how much you polish up a turd, at the end of the day, it's still going to be a turd. Having finished this sorry excuse for a reboot, I'm left with one big, important question that I can't quite figure out the answer to. Who in the hell was this game made for? It certainly isn't for Saints Row fans. The style and tone is completely different from what made the previous entries enjoyable, the old cast has been replaced with a bunch of one-dimensional hipsters, the humor has been sterilized into painfully unfunny white noise, and the gameplay and content available are somehow worse than everything that's come before. It isn't really made for newcomers either, being too bland, creatively bankrupt, and unpolished to leave any lasting impression, and it can't possibly compete with the droves of better open-world games available nowadays. By the time I get this review out, I bet most people will have moved on from Saints Row altogether, if they played it at all. It'll come up again in a few months when people are discussing disappointing or worst games of the year, and then no one will ever think about it again except when talking about how far the franchise fell from grace. If you really want to spend some time with the Third Street Saints, please go back and download any of the original games. I guarantee you will have a much better experience. 